Okay, hello everyone. Uh, you're here with Benjamin Kallenberg from ConsciousZine.com and today's lecture or talk is uh, called Cyborgs in the Forest. Uh, now I could call it Cyborgs and Psychedelics but um, we're going to call it Cyborgs in the Forest for now and I might do another one and call that next one Cyborgs and Psychedelics. We will trek into that territory but uh, I could definitely make another video to uh, tag team this video up and uh, follow it up. Okay, so um, I just want to introduce myself and now we're going to go to screencast and we're going to go uh, to, first we're going to watch a video that I just found yesterday um, and then we're going to go to screencast and go to uh, the high tech page in www.consciousazine.com so, uh, hello. I was just saying hello and let's go to the screencast. Alright, hi guys. Now we're on the screencast. So, first I thought let's start with this video I found just yesterday. It's called Most Awesome Robots Until 2014. Just someone's YouTube video. Um, so let's have a look here. I did not make this video, but I thought it was awesome yesterday. Come here. Try again. That's not really funny. That is just awesome. <laughs> you know, I just, yesterday when I saw this for the first time, I just thought, oh my god, this is awesome. You know, it's finally, 
it's finally here. It's finally compressed. Uh, you know, compared to the other robots, in my opinion, this one is a concrescence. A little bit, at least a little bit. Uh, concrescence generally means, you know, more complex than the surrounding medium. And say you look at, like, Boston Dynamics Big Dog or the Mars Rover. I know the Mars Rover costs way more than this, but in my opinion, just because of the humanization of this robot, it's uh, more compressed. So, uh, I think the user friendliness uh, for the human is a big part of the concrescence of a robot. Um, so, I'm a firm believer that we're being pulled from the future, not haphazardly and uh, out of happenstance uh, coming from the past. You know, the past is coordinated to, uh, to navigate the future. I'm not really uh, a fan of that. Um, because, you know, in the maximum novelty domain now, reference Terence McKenna's Time Wave Zero, uh, you know, the, the past is no longer an accurate guide, and I think we're being pulled from the future. Now, so, uh, the concrescences of each, well, each concrescence is what pulls us towards it. I call them end state ideals. So, you, you've got all the, you know, back in 2011, I remember watching a lot of robotics, and I'll take you to the high-tech page in a minute, but, um, in Conscious Zine, but, uh, I remember seeing all these different robots. There was one robot doing human emotionality. There was run, one robot uh, learning to step over stairs. There was Osimo and... Uh, you know, you've got, you had all these different kind of robots learning little specific sort of areas, and then at the, they'll all compress and compress into one cyborg, you know? So that's what I'm talking about. So I just thought this was awesome. Now, uh, we'll, we'll skip through the rest of the movie. In case you're wondering how I've got this movie off YouTube, I'm just opening the software I did it with now. It's called Freemake Video Downloader. So just Google that and download that. You just paste URLs in and it turns it into MP4s or uh, FLVs so um, or MP3s. So really good software. <clears throat> Alright, so yeah, I thought that was just wicked. Great video, whoever uploaded this, it's good. So then you've got Honda's Asimo. Most of us probably know Asimo. So he avoids he avoids people's collisions. Yeah, notice they all talked at once and he could discern between all three voices. So this is the beginning of multiple state ism, isn't it? Got a Simo playing ball. I think he runs. Anyway, there's the drawing robot. I'm not too fussed about this one. I think it's a little average. I mean, that's just, you know, looks like hard coding to me. And see what I mean by the different robots? Uh, like doing specific skills. Now, they're all going to compress into like one perfect robot, if you will. Anyway, let's keep going. Oh, this one's interesting. Because look how human he looks. You know, he looks reasonably human. Look at that. Awesome. There's the big dog, I think it's called. Boston Dynamics. ロボットを作るのはいいんだけども、ロボットにえ、心が持っているロボットの中にその心があるように見える、そういうロボットを作りなさいと。ま、1つだけ今現在50年後どうなるかっていうのは
、人間が一番やっぱり全ての生物の中でフレキシブルな生物ですから、人間がそのいわゆるアンドロイドになりする新しいロボットというものに。Now I want to stop him there. There is a possibility they'll accept to live in harmony, and now that's generally what the talk is about today. It's called Cyborgs in the Forest.、Um, this is completely my intellectual property. It just came to me one day, and, and I thought, because I thought, you know, after seeing all this and seeing how the robots are going to compress into what you're kind of looking at now, a humanoid robot that can do just a lot of things, and,、uh, you know,、um, I thought, hmm, so what does that leave for humans to do? Uh, I always ask how, whence, why, and where. I don't just ask what.、Um, because, you know, I'm a bit of a philosopher. Now, I thought, well, what's going to be left for humans to do? Because,、uh, you know, the other day I read an article that's saying by 20 years' time from now, it's 2014, it's the 25th of the 7th, 2014, by 20 years from now,、uh, I read an article saying,、uh, You know,、uh, 40 to 50 percent of our jobs are going to be taken by robots. So, what are 50 percent of the world's working population going to do then? Now, we'll get into that in a minute. You'll see some quotes that I've written on the high tech page, and we'll get into that. And that's the main crux of this talk because I don't notice anybody saying this, what I'm about to、uh, tell you. Nobody I've seen utter this stuff. So,、um, and that's why I said I could exchange the talk for cyborgs in the forest to cyborgs and psychedelics. Anyway, let's continue. <laughs> Pardon me. What have we got here? The Mars Curiosity. So, yeah, there's some interesting scenes in here. A little bit boring. When he goes over to the rock, and he does what looks like a spectral analysis of the rock. So, I'm just trying to show you some features and have you think about them all sort of in one robot or, you know, a couple of really amazing robots. So there. And now the last robot. I thought this was amazing. Because I'm from Australia. When I saw this, I sort of blew my load. <laughs> A robotic kangaroo or wallaby. <laughs> Thank you. 
Look at that. That's just awesome. Very nice. <laughs> so that's a Festo robot. Uh, robot. So as you can see, the abilities to do just about everything uh, biological uh, animals can, the robots uh, are going to be able to do. Uh, now that's why I call IT a simulacra of reality. It's like an upgraded copy of some sort. Okay, so the recording's about to run out and I'm going to come back after I save this. Alright, let's be done with this video. So here's the page in Conscious Zine called the High Tech Page that I've fully put together myself. Uh, you just go through here and I say I've fully put it together myself because some people have their own pages in Conscious Zine. You can see Jade, Brad, D, my friend uh, Tamara Sage. Um, so this page is just and you know the subject pages can have multiple authors so people any of these people can contribute to this page just no one has so this is my uh, page basically well let's start with a little quote here that I just put up yesterday I'll probably I might even rearrange it it just came out it was a bit glib do you see how robots or in particular the technological singularity is an adumbration of the genesis singularity and that would be referring to this page genesis singularis which was the grand cycle you've heard me talk about before which was 2012 the addendum now let's continue 2012 well in both cases we cannot see over the naked singularities event horizon bar through psychedelic meditation or vision. This is what humans, notice how I've spelt it, will come down to. We have the dream time connection. That will be one of the few things robots will long for. And what will more so become our purpose of being. And uh, that really sides with the talk today because I think we've got to get past this grim, the grim scenario you know, kind of summarized by this picture. The grey goo fear, you know, that there'll be little nano robots who will just consume everything and turn everything into a grey goo. And <laughs> We've got, I think we should get a little bit past this sort of fear angle of the robots. Now, another quote from me. Technology will make the populace more spiritual in general through realization of their innate spiritual nature. A case coming about through polarity vision, you know, that's me, uh, you know, through seeing that you're not a robot and, uh, you know, it will create incension ascension for some people. So here we go. Here's a few good links. Here's where, um, <laughs> let's read my comment first. And this will create a whole bunch of new dreamers and many will approach psychedelics and the archaic revival will sweep the populace as history has ended in green. Uh, history ends in green is something Terence McKenna said. I call it collapsed into earth. Here's another quote I made yesterday. There will even be party bots. Think about changing your career to dreamer. <laughs> okay, so let's open this article from my uh, Facebook friend Ramayana. This is Nexus Illuminati, the new Illuminati uh, blog spot. Robots are coming and they are replacing warehouse workers and fast food employees. That's just the title of this article, but it runs a lot deeper. Now there's a quick little thing here where this guy programs this robot to move. It actually looks like the robot we saw, the NAO, doesn't it? At the start of the video, it's the same size and similar concept, if it's not the exact same one. And uh, there's another one. 
So anyway, down here, you know, I was looking through this. Uh, Self-driving cars, bartending, gourmet, gourmet hamburger preparation. When self-driving vehicles take over, what will happen to 3.1 million Americans that drive trucks for a living? Now, you see where we're trekking into now. Foxconn has been planning to buy 1 million robots to replace human workers, and it looks like that change, albeit gradual, is about to start. So here we are. It's only 25,000 per robot. They probably last... They're probably cheaper than a human, <laughs> all in all. Well, yeah, that would already be cheaper than a yearly wage, wouldn't it? So anyway, um, you know, imagine living 85 and living alone. We all know that, you know, there's going to be a lot of uh, helper robots for the elderly. That's a common theme you always hear about if you follow robotics trends. Doctors will see you shortly. Doctor robots. Johnson & Johnson proposes to replace anesthesiologists during simple procedures such as colonoscopies, uh, not with nurse practitioners, but with machine robots. Now, here, down the bottom here, I found very interesting. And this is just the beginning, indeed, my friends. In a previous article, I discussed the groundbreaking study, this not me, by Dr. Carl Frey and Dr. Michael Osborne of Oxford University, uh, which came to the conclusion that 47% of all US jobs could be automated within the next 20 years. <clears throat> so that's intense. Uh, let's just Google for one second, because I thought of that chart that I've seen Ray Kurzweil put up. Um, and, and, and exponential computing trend. Uh, let's see if we can find the image. Yep, here it is. So, here's one chart that Ray put up. Ray Kurzweil's the co director of Singularity University there in America, and I've been listening to him for a couple of years now. I remember back in the day he taught me about uh, Moore's Law, which is the doubling of, currently the doubling of transistors on computer chips about every 18 months, and why your smartphone gets, uh, you know, a little bit smarter every year or two. And that's why I say on the front page of Conscienzine, Conscienzine's not to be viewed on a dumb smartphone, because they're still dumb. They're not smart yet. <laughs> not in my opinion. Anyway, so here we have a logarithmic plot, and it says... You know, by about 2045, I think I remember Ray Kurzweil saying, the computers will be up to the level of all human brains. Uh, that's their density of connection and so on, and um, their computing power. And only five years previous, at 2040, one human brain, I remember him saying, so the chart looks about 2030 or so, it's equal to one human brain. Now, um, and you know, currently... We're almost up to equal to one mouse brain. I'm not sure if we're up to that exactly yet. I haven't uh, Googled that specific um, term. But yeah, so there's a little chart. And this is the exponential logarithmic plot of uh, the growth of computing. So you can see it starts off really sideways. There's a lot of time dimension. So this, we're going sideways or following an arrow of time, so to speak, linear time. So you can see up here the time dimension begins to disappear. The time dimension begins to disappear. So it's just compound growth, you know, it's going to be insane. Now this is also another way it mirrors the Genesis Singularis. So, you know, it was said that uh, 2012 time has disappeared, and it has for people like me. Um, people who did not surf the concrescence to the eschaton would not know what I'm talking about right now. They'd be like, what? Time disappeared? What? You're a crackpot, Ben. No, but for the other way showers, how come they all recognize what I'm saying? They feel it. And um, you have to understand the resonances impinging too, I believe, of Terence McKenna's time wave. Now, I always, I always go on about the time wave, so I'll quickly show you. 
the one I want you to watch. It's a 24 minute version, uploaded by Loaded Shaman. I've also downloaded this, but this is the one I want you to watch and the one I always refer to. 24 minute version, Terence McKenna Time Wave Zero. Simple. Anyway, let's go back to this article. So that's intense, huh? 47%. That is crazy. Indeed. So, what are humans going to be left to do once these machines take half the jobs? And that's the question that I posed to myself over the last little while, the last few years. And indeed, as I've quoted here, more dreamers will be born. You know, what are we left to do? Well, the robots don't have the Dreamtime connection. So we'll go into that in a minute, a bit more. But let's just look through this page. So you've got light keyboard. That's cool. Skynet actually exists. <laughs> let's just keep doing this. So that guy, that looks like the one from Osaka University, uh, I think, where the guy's created a robot that looks exactly like him, that professor. So you can see here I've just sort of built up all the high-tech innovations that I've found. Robot insects, wireless contact lenses. You know, you'll view the internet through contact lenses. They've already got one or two pixels in there. So it's uh, not too far uh, a trek to filling it all up and making it uh, so that you can have the internet in your eye. <laughs> There's an ent entomopter. Robot bird, I think that's by Festo again, a company. And of course, the buildings are going to come alive also. Biological buildings. I also have a, another page called Bio Revolutions page, just below this page. If you go to the More menu up there. So here's the robotics uh, post. This is where I've sort of put all the robot videos I've found on YouTube. I don't know what links still work and what are gone. That's why I use Freemake. So that when YouTube videos disappear, I've got the video for myself. Cyborg enhancements already available. Now we're going to talk about that. Let's talk about that um, in, in one second. We'll talk about that. Why I don't think that's the best idea in one way. Why I don't think it's good. So, uh, where's that Festo one? Well, let's just go to YouTube again and it'll be quicker for me to show you. Just type in Festo. And here they come. So there's a robotic bird, that's right, and it lands on the guy's hand. I guess we can watch it. There's that kangaroo. Another big bird there. Wow. Woolworths Red Spot Special means better than Air other penguin. big brands. Like Helga's Bread Variety. Now $2.60. Save $2.79. This better than half price deal starts tomorrow at Woolworths. I'm not even going to go into 3D printing because we have all heard about 3D printing. So just keep all of this in the back of your mind when I'm about to do my spiel of cyborgs in the forest. I, this is all this is all about just keeping all of this. I've shown you all of this in the last uh, half hour just to have this in the back of your mind while I'm talking in a minute. So um, there's also a jelly. Let's just There's a jellyfish robot.
Oh my god, a spider robot. I haven't seen that yet. <laughs> oh, epic. Adam, what's in the box? Delicate, that I needed a way to cart it around. To call the Robotics. All right, we're back. The uh, screencast cuts out after 15 minutes. It moves just like a spider does in terms of distributing its forward motion across its legs. And so their big technology is the controller board and the algorithms to coordinate all the leg movements. Yes, but the algorithms that control the leg movements are not just walk forward, walk backwards, turn left, turn right. It's actually far more advanced than that. And it's from an animating standpoint, like having been a puppeteer and having built animatronic puppets, this thing blows everything I've ever seen out of the water. And that's because they actually use three motors per leg. Three mo yeah. A lot of robot spiders that people build simplify that, use three motors for maybe the entire body and right. link them all together. And these guys actually make a hexapod that is much simpler in terms of a walking platform three and three and three and three. This now that's an interesting point that he said, you know, it's using more little motors. Now, um, for those who don't know, uh, you know, this exponential computing trend, this Moore's law, the doubling of transistors on computer chips, making them more powerful every 18 months, this also means that there's a, there's a, um, a, a down in scale motion. The, the motion is uh, towards smaller robotics, uh, more densely compacted things. So you've got these little nano robots. Maybe we can find a few pictures on Google Images. So let's just go have a look at that. Uh, da, 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 nano, nano robots. Now I've seen some made at just the atomic size, a few atoms whacked together uh, on fizzorg.com. So the point is, uh, you know how he was saying, yeah, this one works better because it's got more motors. What's going on here? Oh, my internet's frozen. Oh, here we go. So, yeah, you know, Ray Kurzweil says that um, in, in some years from now, nanobots will be more effective than red blood cells. <laughs> in his uh, book, which I used to have, which I lost, uh, called uh, Fantastic Voyage, How to Live Long Enough to Live Forever. And that's kind of based on getting over the BioBridge 1 and BioBridge 2 uh, towards that 2040 scenario where you can upload your brain to a uh, computer and sort of be immortalized that way, physically. So let's just go to images and see if we can find a little nanobot. Well, you know, here are some, but I was looking for even smaller ones that I've seen. But as you can see, you know, look, this is a nanobot touching a cell. They're receptors, I think, on the end of a cell. So you can see how, how uh, small these things are going to get. Now, um, that gives us the ability to compact more of them in a tinier space, doesn't it? So that might be one. So, um, you know, we're going to be able to create a humanoid which is made out of nanobots. That's why I say to alien enthusiasts, you know, if you really think there's physical aliens from Zinebel Canuzi and Thousand Ton Beryllium ships, uh, you know, these guys would be millions of years more advanced than us, or thousands and whatever, if they can space travel. So, um, you know, by then they would logically have, obviously, things like um, high-end technology, like they would be made out of robotics, then you wouldn't be able to tell if they're walking amongst you, and they certainly, you know, they'd have cloaks and everything, they certainly wouldn't look like a bloody grey alien. I, I really don't think that, <laughs> that scenario is plausible at all. Anyway, so 
you get the idea we'll be able to compact more in a smaller space you know and um, like I said you can make a whole robot instead of out of chunky metal you'll be able to make a whole robot out of little other nano robots they'll you know get form into one big robot but they'll be you know cells the each nano robot will be like a human cell you know and they'll form a larger body so and and, and at that point we're going to really recognize how complex the human body is and um you know, I think that alone will make people more spiritual in realizing themselves. Now, spiritual doesn't mean too much more to me than being uh, in vertical in your own light column rather than horizontal. So, um, you know, and obviously spiritual, the name is tagged like that because you are... Uh, spirits run through you you're an open manifold and you've got the light body the soul mind going on all three dan gems working you know the gut the heart and the crystal room and yeah so um let's just continue watching this one for a little bit this is kind of their their flagship right now uh it's just being delivered uh so i got mine just before halloween on the in the first run it's and, amazing uh, that they announced it as basically a prototype yeah and and said you know if you want to get in on this we can deliver it to you like said by halloween but it's all 3d printed parts it's all 3d printed parts so the entire thing weighs 300 grams yeah there's a, it is a robot like dragonfly 10 ounces incredibly incredibly light um in fact one of the heaviest things is this switch here up front which isn't really a switch it's just a glowing blue light that acts as the eye and it's I, I mean i totally get the beat. anyway enough of that as you can see you know it's it's getting more and more complex some of us wouldn't even imagine 10 years ago there'd be a robot jelly for christ's sake you know so now you've basically got simulacra simulacrum occurring you've got um new animals you know this is going to make us realize how complex we are and um i think it's going to make us come back into ourselves and really realize our special nature you know um people always go on about this argument that we're not the center of the universe well i think we are the center of the cosmic drama so to speak and that's got nothing to do with our physical position whether or not we're in the center of the milky way or if we're just haphazardly out on an arm in a random location that doesn't matter that's just all orchestration you know to get every beam of light that needs to be here here so you know that's got nothing to do with us being the center of the cosmic drama uh, because I hear other uh, you know uh, robotic people roboticists sort of go on about this thing that you know the humans aren't the the center of the universe we once thought that our earth was the center of the solar system and rah 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 that's got nothing to do with being the center of the cosmic drama or the height of complexity and uh, if you watch the time wave zero you'll understand that i'm sure terence puts it in quite a quite an easy way to understand so as you can see we've got all sorts of things coming now where does that leave the human you know well they're going to be able to do just about everything we can do. Uh, so let's just have a little look through this page, and then we'll go into the end of my spiel, I think. So it's got a few little moving pictures there. Some ideas of the future. <laughs> Look at that, that's how light that material is, it sits on top of that. So you can see all of this compressing together, and a super light robot which can fly and rah rah rah, you know. You know, the thing will be able to do everything. It'll be able to do more than you, because you can't fly. So where does that leave you? There's that bird. That. So where does that leave you, leave you the human? Well, there's those jellies well think about it you know they don't have the dream time connection so I call it cyborgs in the forest uh, because it's close to my heart this talk uh, while I was doing my business degree in about 2010 I sort of heard about this Moore's law and Ray Kurzweil and uh, 
I thought, well, it makes sense to not prolapse and fall away from the future, but align with it. So I uh, took two double IT majors in uh, my degree, and I'm almost finished. But yeah, so like just uh, programming code, making applications and websites. Now, that eventually will translate into me being able to program a robot, which is pretty cool. And um, I see myself going to the Amazon first, and then maybe to China and Japan after for uh, robotic sort of stuff. I don't know. I feel the pull. So, you know, the human, in the, the cyborgs in the forest thing, that's just pretty much all about um, me as well. You know, obviously not everybody is going to want to go live in the forest and be with a cyborg, but there's going to be more than just me out there who wants to do this. So, um, you know, the idea is... Uh, When, when this cyborg comes along, you know, it will be able to do all my duties. Now here's something I've called the Syntactic Semantic Super Suit. We could talk about that in a minute too. So, um, and look, this algae, algae, algae culture symbiosis suit, it actually feeds you. So you can be walking around in the jungle, right, and I could be a botanist. Let's just say I'm a botanist because I want to go discover some new uh, bird species and some new insect species and stuff in the Amazon. You know, I want to go deep in there. And the other day I was talking to my friend Veronica Sampano and she's a, a shamana from uh, Uruguay. And, um, you know, she was saying, oh, no, you know, there's no forest like Amazon in the world. D don't be crazy. You're not going to go in there by yourself, Ben. And I said, yeah, well, I, I want to wrestle an anaconda. <laughs> I'm a bit of a Steve Irwin, you know. Now, um, and she was saying that as I was looking through uh, Google images and, you know, there was a big jungle cat and I thought, yeah, you know, she's right. It's, it'd be a bit intense for me to want to go off into the jungle by myself. Now, why would I want to go off into the jungle by myself? Well, because I'm a, a proper dreamer. Uh, I'm a philosopher dreamer and um, psychedelics side with me heavily. And I believe that... Uh, you know, the future, this post uh, eschatonal uh, domain here in the maximum novelty domain is going to uh, institute a lot more use of psychedelics and not a lot, a lot less, you know, because alcohol and tobacco are dangerous, but plant hallucinogens are not. Uh, you know, who dies from uh, psilocybin cubensis magic mushroom? Who dies from cannabis? There's no ever recorded death from cannabis alone, you know. So, uh, these things are going to be more present in our future, you know, you've got all sorts of research, you know, coming about like that they give neurogenesis, you know, psilocybin gives neurogenesis, and you've got everyone, you know, this ayahuasca movement, everybody's into the ayahuasca now, and they want to experience that, as do I, and, um, you know, that's what, what you're there for, because you've got the dream time connection, you have the soul mind or the light body which picks up all these spirits and lets these spirits run through you. So when that's how the shamans in the Amazon found these plants, they they connect. That's how connected to nature they are. You know that they, they haven't experienced the fall away from the guy in logos because they've been in its uh, bosom. You know. So this is a. Uh, what I'm, what I'm talking about here, you know, to be able to go in the jungle and to not be uh, killed by that jungle cat because my my flying robot bird can reconnaissance back to me. Oh, there's a jungle cat uh, 50 meters away, Ben. You might want to walk to the left uh, for a few hundred meters. <laughs> and, you know, it can do that. And then you've got, in the meantime, you know, so you've got your safety net around you with all these robots buzzing around you. You could also have, like, this picture here, an invisibility cloak, so the big cat can't even see you. And this syntactical super suit will hide your smell and your scent and your pheromones and everything. So then, you know, you've got the safety net feature or idea of this whole cyborgs in the forest thing then, you know, that gives, then there's the efficiency angle, you know, while you're sitting there taking your ayahuasca in dreaming mode, uh, you've, 
you've got a robot there doing the botany for you. You know, it's it's got its little cameras that can zoom up more than your eyes. And it's, oh, it's recognized a new species. Let's label that under Benjamin Kallenberg found that species. Because <laughs> it's my robot that I programmed, you know. And, um, you know, I've written the algorithm so that I should be able to lay stake to what it finds sort of thing. Now, that also makes you realize that copyright is just stupid because we are the earth you know and why are we holding this from each other why are we holding our amazing excretion ex uh, contraptions from each other we should be sharing it all and rocketing off to space and onward and upward to glory human but you know no everybody wants to copyright everything and live in a self selfish separatist environment and i think this is also falling that's what the end of history signifies the dissolution of barriers and boundaries All right, we're back. So, as I was saying, you know, we've just discovered that these robots are going to be able to fit just about every little niche that you can think of and do just about everything that, you know, us humans are currently doing. And uh, so w that leaves you with the, the obvious uh, statement, you're only limited by your imagination. I mean, the other day when my lecturer said this to me in uh, IT programming, you know, for a program, you know, I gulped and pulled my uh, the top of my shirt collar and went, gulp, <laughs> because, you know, now the pressure's on, <laughs> you know, the pressure is on, you're only limited by your imagination, so um, if you've got no imagination, you know, it's going to show up. So that's why I said, you know, everybody's to become a dreamer now, unfortunately for some, <laughs> and fortunate for everything. <laughs> so yeah, so where are we up to? The safety net. Yeah, you know, you, you obviously you're going to have a safety net, and you're going to be able to trek into the Amazon by yourself in order to take the psychedelics by yourself. Now, you do want to take psychedelics by yourself. You, you might want to have someone in a room, three rooms away, you know, with a bell. Uh, sorry, you might want to sit there with a bell and have someone three rooms away, and that's, you know, my idea of a, a, a guide <laughs> on a psychedelic trip. But you want, you want to do it yourself, by yourself. This is how we take these things in silent darkness, you know, uh, and um, not in a in a a lit up environment with other people and things around you want the robots to be autonomous and you know doing their own thing you want it to be gathering your breakfast you know it might be gathering the chickens eggs then going to pluck some greens and I don't know it might be picking the bananas off the banana tree and so on you know while you're waking up meditating uh, drinking you know getting your organs started uh, the best way with some eclectic tea or something, some warm eclectic tea, um, something like this, you know, and then in the meantime, while you're doing that, preparing for your psychedelic trip, because, you know, some of these psychedelics, like the Amanita muscaria, last eight hours, and, you know, the psilocybin cubensis, it lasts seven hours. Ayahuasca, I'm not sure, I know it lasts hours as well. So, you know, you're going to wake up, you want to prepare for this, you know, an examination of consciousness is warranted. Who was, an, who was I an asshole to yesterday? You know, <laughs> what did I do wrong or where can I better myself? That's what these psychedelics help us do, question ourselves. There's a whole lot of people out there who are just not questioning themselves enough. And you're becoming burdens on this world. So we want to switch from being burdens or a or infestative bacterium on the surface of Earth to being custodians and midwives and stewards for Earth. You know, that's our more natural role that's going to uh, come into play now. And you can see how this is all forming. The robots are here in perfect time for this. You know, the history has ended. It, we're into the psychedelic transcendental official future, the maximum novelty domain. So uh, you can see where this is all headed towards this stuff that I'm talking about and we're not trekking away from this sort of uh, stuff 
So then, you know, you've obviously going to have your safety net. You know, if the big jungle cat's coming, your eye in the sky will say so. You're, you've got your efficiency angle. You know, your robot's picking your breakfast while you're sitting there in conversation with your friends or waking up meditating or whatever, or going for a surf or whatnot. You know, and, and your robots are doing all your chores. So, you know, we are excretion machines. You, you put energy or food into us and, um, you know, we pop out ideas and, and things made out of stuff. So, we seem to be, for now, trapped on this planet. Uh, we don't have every, 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 everything built to go to Mars yet or anywhere else and definitely not uh, past the Oort clouds and, you know, out of the solar system. It's going to take a while. So in the meantime, we have to fix Earth. We have to fix all the crap that's going on here. You know, um, we have to stop turning it into a dying world and uh, start turning it into heaven on Earth. You know, heaven is not some place you go. No wonder Earth has wound up like this, my baby boomer elders, when you so thoroughly believe that somewhere else was to be heavenly. Of course you're going to treat where you are unheavenly. And you've made hell on earth, for fuck's sake. So, you know, for Christ's sake, wake up. See what's going on and um, join in. We, we will forgive you. We, we will actually forgive you. <laughs> Not just talk rhetoric about it. And we won't just sit on our gold throne saying, yeah, save the children while I sit here on my gold throne with my gold staff and my big pope hat. You know, we're, we're the real the real deal you know magic reality come to life and we're, we're the real deal here and uh we we're here to help everyone else uh you know make that transition out of the miasma of the past and the noxious influence of all these ideologies and uh into you know the feeling experienced moments of now and the luscious nature and the comfort of being, you know, and uh, we don't want to be like Lonnie Childs and create the masturbation cross for the self-raping child. This is disgusting and child abuse, you know. Look at this thing. Yeah, someone has literally created this, a guy called Lonnie Childs. Now, as soon as one of his friends sees this video and tries to put this video down, fuck you, idiot. I'm going to have Freemake video copied it, and I'll just re-upload it, you noob. So, look at this. Just child abuse. Papoose, Cross, and Arm Immobilizer work together to safely secure a self-raping child. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So where were we? <laughs> it's ridiculous, isn't it? Uh, you know, we want to turn from out of, you know, seeing the body as some sin as to really experiencing it properly. And, you know, as everyone who meditates knows, you become in the ecstasy and the joy of the body. And the, the, it is the temple. You know, this is the real temple. Your body is the temple. You don't need to go somewhere every Sunday to worship some uh, ideological god, an anthropomorphized god who has a, a bad attitude. <laughs> the temple is the body, and the psychedelics are instruments that we can play inside this uh, amphitheater. And, um, you know, we can see our inner language, we can see our problems for real, instead of going to talk to another person. You know, the psilocybin cubensis once said, one human trying to gain enlightenment off another human is like one grain of sand trying to gain enlightenment off another grain of sand. Now, that came from the psilocybin cubensis, who has much bigger networks than your body, and thus would pick up a lot of information. Um, from the Gaian Logos, or Bolos, the, the body of Earth, you know, the, the Gaia hypothesis, which is obvious and not even a hypothesis. <laughs> uh, and, um, you know, these are the instruments we, we work with in this domain, and these psychedelics are not inferior. They, they give shaman power, they give 
light power. They don't take away your power. You're doing something wrong if they're making you ill and, you know, what's happening is you're... You've got to realize that if a psychedelic is making you um, feel bad or something, it's because it's showing you to yourself. And so you should recognize what a fool you've been. What a what a utter nincompoop or asshole you were. And that's what these things help us do. And they're definitely not inferior. And to go much deeper into this, the psychedelics are only part of reality that part of reality that is psychedelic see this maximum novelty domain is largely defined by being transcendental and obviously you can see look we're transcending transcendental you know and it, this domain is largely um signified by maximum novelty and and um transcendentalism and so you know it makes sense and, and psychedeliation, the psychedelic experience, you know, it's not just that psychedelics are, a, are, you know, little things that you can connect to synapses. Reality seems to have an inbuilt feature, you know, innate in itself that is psychedelic. Reality is psychedelic. Think about it. We were monkeys, pack monkeys, and now look what we're doing. We've come from pack monkeys to half robot things. And then who knows? You can barely imagine the future. You know, who knows where we're going with this? The universe is always thrusting towards more complexity and more psychedelic realization and nature. You know, the, the period of history was very mundane compared to what we're about to see now, post eschaton. It's all starting. This is only the beginning. Uh, you know, this is only the beginning, this crude sort of, these crude, uh, whacked together bits of metal and stuff. This is only the beginning. This is only the beginning. This, you know, crude suit, the, the actual syntactical super suit that will come about will be, you know, it won't look like that. It might look more like this or something. You know, it'll look uh, much more um, symbiotic, uh, much more skin tight and you know what I mean it'll be well suited so here's a post I've made about um, the syn syntactical super suit uh, we'll go into that in a second I did just want to say um, you know this is also part of the safety net idea that I was talking about you know you're gonna have the robot efficiency angle you're gonna have the safety net angle now this is part of the safety net angle uh, you know, because uh, so, say you're on Mars. I, I have this vision for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it will actually happen in the future. I don't know. But um, I have this vision of this syntactical super suit. Now, I came up with the idea when I was um, listening to Terence McKenna talk about um, how, how you know, octopi, they, they can blush from, you know, grey through green to to brown to yellow you know they can blush through all these colors and it's it's expression it's visual language and in the future we're not going to want to hide from each other we're not going to be as dark and black as and, and as evil as we are now we're going to want to communicate because we're going to realize that that's for maximum efficiency now, I always had this envisionment on Mars that this syntactical super suit will, like this uh, diagram you're seeing here of this girl flashing, this bionic thing flashing here, you know, this suit will also send out waves like that and of color. So it will tell your mood to people without you even having to speak little mouth noises, you know. So it's like the octopi's skin. You know, we'll be able to camouflage, but also in the way of showing our emotionality so we can't lie to each other. And we're going to want that for maximum efficiency, trust me. And so I always had this vision of uh, being on Mars and say my friend was, say there was an impending dust storm or say the dust storm was upon us. And, you know, I'm standing outside a latch and my friend is over there fiddling with something, I don't know, a drill or something. Uh, or she's over there doing something on Mars and and I can barely see her because of the dust storm and I definitely can't hear her 
because the dust storms got tremendous, uh, you know, noise. You know, and so all I can do then is look to her super suit, and what is she feeling? Uh, is there a big space rock? coming towards her, uh, you know, is there a rock off the surface of Mars flying towards her in her last seconds of impending doom, and then is it going to come towards me, and then she, you know, sheds off a, a light band of uh, red to say that she's scared or something, you know, and then I know, and then maybe that, that one second is enough for me to react and dodge the rock coming or something, you know, so that's just one scenario, that's just one instance. So then obviously this thing's going to be connected, you know, I've put little links here like brain chip, uh, invisibility cloak, and, you know, I've put all these little links here to give you an idea that of the eclectic nature of this suit. You know, obviously it's going to be hooked up to our biology. I think this is where we're going. We're not, uh, we're not going towards more of this uh, crude nature and uh, this uh, interlacing of, you know, the cyborg thing in the back of the head. I think we'll get past that pretty quickly. Okay, we're back here for another 15 minute stint. So, uh, as you can see, you know, the thrust of the universe is towards being able to meditate more and take more psychedelics and be more of a dreamer. Because, um, you know, and be more in the psychedelic state, which some people need psychedelics for, definitely, to help just detach from this noxious miasma of the past. It, these psychedelics are efficacious for this. Uh, you know, I can help you, I can uh, read an article in a minute on that, of that uh, CNN reporter lady. Anyway, uh, so, you know, obviously the thrust of the universe is you know, towards that, towards us being more made of light. That's our destiny, you know. Our destiny is not for more crude uh, you know, density, there is a densification process, you know, the higher dimensions have the effect of grounding out, oh, sorry, the lower dimensions have the effect of grounding out the higher dimensions, and so there's this densification process, you know, the higher dimensions have the effect of adding on to the lower dimensions, the, the third and second dimension, the second dimension, which is, you know, the building blocks of creativity, elements, minerals, and uh, atomics. Now, uh, and then the 3D reality is zonal realities, you know, even a person, just a person by themselves is a zonal reality. So, um, you know, obviously this process of densification is occurring, uh, as is complexification of the universe, but, um, you know, I think some somehow our, uh, as a human and not an anthropoid body, our um, destiny is moving away from density. Um, we're destined to be made out of lighter and lighter stuff and, and ascend more and more. And, um, you know, this is not the future because this is here now. This is not where we're going. Enhancement's already available. You know, that's here now. So this is not where we're going. We're going to more lighter and lighter stuff like I was talking about. So, um, you know... Uh, these robots, you know, I'm going to have to cut this recording off soon. I'm going to have to finish talking because I've got to go have uh, breakfast. It's almost midday. It's 11.45, you know, I've got to uh, AM, so I've got to go have breakfast soon because my body is starting to hunger. Now, that's another point. When we're in the forest and meditating and when you're in this environment where you're just so full of light and so happy and content and... Uh, you know, you feel really buoyant, your body doesn't seem to hunger as much, all of this sort of thing. You know, that's what the robots are going to, going to help facilitate our uh, movement towards uh, transcendence, you know. So these things are, are going to help with that, and I don't think this is the future exactly. This is here now. So think about that, you know. And so, yeah, we're going to be instilling more light bodies, you know. Uh, the grand cycle was the process of undifferentiated matter becoming, you know, light bodies in co-creation. Some people, these organic portals may follow this trend, you know, the bodies, these anthropoids. 
the uh, the, un the the soulless humans, you know, in the only in the bottom half of the light body macabre vehicle, the lower triangle, you know, and they haven't yet had the incension ascension via the higher heart center. Uh, you know, these bodies may follow this trend uh, of you know densification and stuff, but uh, the humans, us humans, H U E underscore man, you know, we're not going to. The way showers, the amalgamans, and all of this, we're not going to follow that trend exactly. You know, in a way we will, but in another way, we're going to be branching off from that and becoming cosmic ecstaticus. You know, this is uh, an open manifold idea where you are in, in cosmogonical alignment and you do feel the cosmolo cosmological uh, casuistry. And you do connect with the spirits of the Amazon of that tree there and that animal to your left. And this is the future. You know, we've got to categorize all this stuff. We've got to connect all the dots before we really leave Earth into deep space, you know. Um, we want because, you know, we want to categorize all the species. We want to connect all the dots for maximum sight. You know, and, and maximum legibility and so forth. We want to read the language and the codes of gear so that we have a good idea when we're going out into space, not so we're just thrusting into space, um, you know, without the idea of what life means and how special it is and how complex it is and what can make what and, you know. So we're also obviously going to have to explore the ocean. That's one thing I haven't talked about. And I've mainly talked about the forest because, as we know, you know, the Amazon is just filled with species and it's densely packed. But we're obviously going to have to dive deep and explore the Marianas Trench more and, you know, explore the deep ocean more because we know more about space than we do about the ocean almost, you know. And it's right beneath us. So this is what I mean. This end of history is this collapse into Earth first. Then we're going to shoot off to space. But first, it's because, you know, at the end of the eschaton there, the Madre was looking out to space via, you know, us through our telescopes and through our astral travels. You know, it actually compressed light bodies out of our, our dense bodies and it flew along uh, ley lines of stars and star streams. I've experienced this. I'm one of these vectors of the Madre. You know, and uh, I think it's a continuing trend. I think she wants to make, Gaia wants to make uh, more people like me, more amalgamative people, uh, less dense people, and uh, less noxious people and more steward like people for the planet. You know, we're going to steward the plants. We're going to cultivate it all and we're going to make a flourishing earth paradise. We're not destined to turn this into bloody hell and uh, screaming agony. That's, uh, that's just come about now at the end of the eschaton as well, really culminated in all these perpetual wars, uh, you know, for the reason of polarity vision, so that all the bodies of gear see what hell we are creating and then through seeing that you can see the polarity of that uh, that's why i say polarity vision you can see the other side of that oh we could be in abundance and joy and happiness and rah 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 so i think that's the trend and you know at the end of history here it's just the end of the fall into history now that miasma is going to wear off and we're going to move into becoming more and more cosmic ecstaticus, you know, from homo rapian to homo cosmic ecstaticus. I actually have a website that's uh, called that. Let's see if we can find that. Actually, I should be able to just go. Here we go. From homo rapian to homo cosmic ecstaticus. Now this is a page you can find in Consciousness. It's just a branch off the main tree website that is consciousazine.com. And so, you know, this is our evolution. So here, here's what I've just been talking about, really. Into lighter and lighter stuff, you know. And this just has, you know, from Earth to the stars. Uh, let's see. I wanted to get this diagram up. Or this picture, sorry. Bit of visual language going on here. We're going to realize this now. 
because we're all becoming so interconnected and so thoroughly connected that this picture is going to be realized by everyone. One man's collateral damage is another man's son. You know, a homo rapian, I call us. You know, we're going to transcend from homo rapian to homo cosmic ecstaticus. So I've got, you know, ascended, cosmic, cosmos conscious creode, evolutionary epoch energization. And on that page, I'll talk a lot about this thing that I call uh, superposition humanity. I envision a humanity where everybody's contributing, not absorbing and taking, but radiating. Everybody will be radiating. Everybody will be contributing and not just taking from humanity. And, you know, the borders will be fully dissolved. No copyright this, copyright that bullshit, you know. And uh, I call it superposition humanity because um, we'll all be contributing and it's like a quantum computer. We'll be able to make simultaneous calculations, so to speak, you know, in an instant, simultaneously, you know. So it will be on many planets at once. We'll be... Connect, connecting via, you know, uh, our light bodies and, and uh, this this new nominosa world, the, the post-threshold higher dimensions and all this stuff. And uh, like this picture a bit, you know, will be stars. Star seeds are currently birthing on Gaia and we're going to be popped out as little star beings. That's what we're going to be. This is the Macabre vehicle that I was talking about. Now, the organic portals are only in the lower Macabre. They're not in the upper Macabre. Now, superposition humanity is generally where everyone's going to be a sold human. I believe this is our evolution, as my note says. My, the first note in my notes domain, bensnotes.weebly.com, is indigo is your evolution in the idgo. The it is this concept I've taken from Buddhism, which really just means the light body or higher self. Now, this is our evolution. That's why I've called it indigo is your evolution. You know, the evolution is to become more sold, not lot more of a uh, not less sold than more of a homo rapian. Our evolution is to ascend to the stars in the fifth light of the sun. And uh, eventually I'll do this page up and it's called robot riding space cowboys, you know. That's our evolution. <laughs> Robot riding space cowboys. I'll probably make a, a whole separate lecture on that. So let's go back to the sort of jungle theme of cyborgs in the forest. So let's go to Biodome Earth page here. We've talked about efficiency that robots will bring in the safety net. Another thing, another dimension the robots are going to bring is the time dimension. Notice everyone's bloody busy these days going to work every day. You have to work. You can't do any magnus opus great work. What magnus opus are, are many of you doing? Barely any, you know. You're all trekking off to work and all this. I, I'm lucky because I've studied and in Australia uh, they pay us to study and um, you know I was lucky in that way but as the robots come in everyone's gonna have more time. On their hands so they're going to bring a time dimension as well so let's go to this psychedelic biodome earth page here so this is an interesting chart you know tobacco that many deaths peanuts 100 deaths a year or whatever marijuana none nil zilch nothing the war on drugs is not based on science if it was two of the most deadly drugs on earth alcohol and tobacco would be illegal so snap out of your miasma and your propagandic brainwash, please. This is a quote I've taken from Terence McKenna. In the swelling bubble of aha realization, the legal persecution of dietary habits by governments, the war on drugs, will take its place with the high button shoe. And, you know, we're going to, the search for the stone is on. Post-eschaton, the search for the stone is on, my friends, you know. The highest mountains, the oldest books, the strangest people, there you will find the stone. And also amongst nature, I would add to that quote, amongst nature you will find the stone there. The philosopher's stone is a higher dimensional object. It's not just grounded alchemy. 
physical grounded alchemy. So this is our ontogenesis. This is part of the new ontos. You know, biodome earth is what we're going to be making. Instead of homo raping, homo raping, you know, raping everything, we're going to be making a biodome earth. Uh, so this page is on phytochemistry and ethnobotany and psychedelics, the indigo adaptive radiation of phenotypy evolution, ontogenesis, peeling ontological and dimensional layers. Uh, it's also connected to the alchemical shamanistic elocution page, which I've also made. And a bit to the pagan prerogative, because as I say, uh, you know, paganism is like a, a smaller notion of pantheism. Pantheism is seeing nature, you know, the whole universe, as God. It, it's not separate from some guy in a chair farting at the end of a lighted tunnel, an anthropomorphized version. <laughs> you know, uh, paganism is uh, this connection to nature, and it is a, a, a sort of meme a meme version of um, pantheism and that's you know I think our evolution too so may the medicine be with you <laughs>